Hey guys, Tony here from Tony Tech Bytes, and this is a build tutorial with the NTXT H1. I purchased this myself, so this video is not sponsored. The first thing you have to do is take off the front glass panel and then the rear panel, and now slide off the side panels that hold the entire case together. You also want to get a Phillips head screwdriver to unscrew these two screws over here to lift up the AIO. This allows you to access the rest of the components inside the case and as you can see there are a bunch of cables that are already pre-managed, pre-routed in the case. And over here I'm installing the IO shield which is important if your motherboard does not have it pre-installed. So I'm using these 632 screw flats because I need to install the motherboard inside the case. And as you can see, I'm lining up the mini ITX motherboard inside, lining it up with the IO shield in the back. I also already installed the CPU as well as RAM and SSD because it's a fairly simple process and I've made multiple videos on YouTube as well as TikTok explaining how to do this. I just wanted this guide to be a little bit more simple, showing how to put all the parts together inside the NZXT H1 versus building everything from scratch. So you can see that I am installing the four screws in the standoffs for this motherboard and it is a fairly simple process because it's just four screws connecting cables and then putting it all together. Over here you can see I'm unbundling the cables and making sure I can identify them so you can see one of them is a pump cable and the other is a fan cable to control the fan for the AIO liquid cooler. The thinner cable plugs into the pump header because it powers on the pump and the thicker cable powers on the CPU fan uh, which in this case belongs to the CPU fan header. Now we have to plug in the front panel cable and this is for the power button as well as the power reset and you plug it into where your motherboard has it located. This blue tipped cable is for the front panel USB ports so you have to plug it into the header on your motherboard. The 24 pin cable that plugs into the motherboard to power on the motherboard and the rest of its components. Make sure to line it up correctly with the notch and you should hear a click. Now for the CPU power cable we have to bundle it together and plug it into the top left side of the motherboard. I forgot I also have to disconnect this plastic cover over here to plug in the front panel audio connector. This is for the mic headphone combo jack in the front of the case. And as you can see over here, I have to line it up with the header and plug it in. Now over here, I'm just tidying up the cables by using the velcro straps that are already pre-installed to the n 6 h one case. And over here, I'm removing the stock Intel bracket to apply the AM41, and you should check out the specific instructions with the NZXT H1 case, because this video is obviously not going to be a very detailed step-by-step -step guide. I'm also removing the plastic cover to access the water block and slide off the Intel bracket so obviously I can apply the AM4 bracket because this is an AMD AM4 system. I am also removing the stock thermal paste that NZXT pre-applies to their coolers so I'm using 91% isopropyl alcohol on a coffee filter to remove it and I'm gonna reapply with my own thermal paste. So I'm just wiping off the thermal paste from the cold plate of the cooler and I believe I already wiped off the CPU's heat spreader earlier on. And of course I'm just installing the AM4 bracket by sliding it in and pushing it all the way through. Now we have to apply thermal paste, I'm using Arctic MX4 just because I want to and I just applied a pea sized amount in the middle of the IHS. And a large P is fine because Ryzen CPUs have slightly larger heat spreaders than Intel CPUs. And over here, I'm just lowering down the water block and you have to line up the clips with the AM4 bracket that's already pre-installed to all AM4 motherboards and you have to basically clip it in and then screw it down to secure it. And now you can see I'm screwing down the screws with even mounting pressure to make sure that the cooler is not lopsided. 
And you can see I switched to a screwdriver because it is slightly easier than using my thumbs. So I'm screwing down the top screw first, then the bottom one, and then top, bottom in that order until both screws are successfully tightened. And now it is time to peel the sticker on the water block. Make sure that you've opened up the clip for the PCIe slot on the motherboard and take off the PCIe slot cover for the riser cable. And we basically just have to plug this into the PCIe slot on the motherboard. You should also hear a click right now when you plug it in. I'm also pushing the tubing to the side so that when you close down the radiator arm, it doesn't interfere with any of the components. Also make sure the cables have enough slack so when you close everything up, it doesn't tug on any cables. And now you can just lower down the radiator arm and get the two screws that we unscrewed earlier and fasten it down with your Phillips head screwdriver. And of course do the other end which is unfortunately cut off a little bit in this video. Now we have to flip over the case to install the graphics card. You can see that there are two screws over there that uh, are already pre-installed so you have to unscrew them. These are Phillips head screws as well. These screws secure the graphics card onto the PCIe slot so we have to remove them first obviously to install the graphics card. We also have to take off this power supply cable cover and find the necessary PCIe power cables uh, to obviously power the graphics card. And my RTX 2060 Super, the Founders Edition one from NVIDIA, uses a single 8-pin PCIe connector. So I fished out an 8-pin PCIe connector and uh, it'll obviously depend on which graphics card you use. But over here, I'm lining up the graphics card to the PCIe riser cable and plugging it in and you should also hear a click. And I'm also screwing down the screws that we unscrewed earlier. And now I am plugging in the power cable to provide power to the graphics card. So now we have to lift up the case and slide the side panel back on or the side panel frame, whatever you want to call it. Make sure it lines up with the IO at the top of the case. Attach the rear panel back on by using the pegs. You just have to push it in and make sure it lines up correctly. I forgot to mention, make sure you flick the power supply switch to on. Now for the front glass panel, you basically have to line up the pegs and push it in just like the rear panel. All right, time to peel it. I also peeled off the other stickers and I'm getting rid of the residue by using isopropyl alcohol and a coffee filter, just wiping it off. Subscribe and like this video if you want to see a follow up where I go over benchmarks and thermals with my Ryzen 9 3900X and RTX 2060 Super. I'm also planning on getting an RTX 3080, I'm not sure which one yet, so I'll definitely be making a ton more videos on the NZXT H1.